He pampered me a lot. Teachers are very important in the life of young students. But I want to do something with Welcome to Scientifically Yours. Let me begin by telling you a story. There was a girl, a small girl, chirpy, bubbly, very active. She was ambitious. She asked questions after questions after questions. She wanted to dream of a world, a world which was better than hers. India had been for a very long time country under subjugation, now India was free. And in this free India, this girl kept on seeing dreams of improving the lives of thousands and millions of people. She wanted to contribute. Dr. Manju Sharma, was I telling your story? <laughs> Did you see yourself in this story? <laughs> To some extent, yes. How did you dream as a child and what did you dream as a child? I was born in a family uh, which was full of, uh, I would say, uh, political activities, cultural activities, very philosophical, uh, very religious uh, because uh, of my grandfather, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya. Uh, my mother was trying to imbibe the same culture in all of us. So we had seen from the childhood a very disciplined life where uh, you are supposed to do everything on time, have a bath, have a puja, go to school. But you always question puja, yes. bath, traditions, yes. everything yes. you question. Yes, but I was very obedient to my mother and uh, my brother who was really my you can say godfather, mm -hmm. who my guide, my teacher, who gave me the basic education. He, he pampered me a lot. So I was really the last child of the family, youngest, very pampered. But uh, I always thought that I want to do something big. That was from the very childhood. Even when I play with my dolls, my doll will be going to London for higher education. <laughs> that was the dream I always, and that's the game I played always. So it was, uh, but I, I had not thought of science till I came to uh, seventh standard. But seventh standard, you had decided that you will be doing science in, in uh, By seventh standard, I knew that I was very fond of a particular subject, which was botany, the plant area. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very attached to looking at the plants, seeing their, how they have evolved, thinking about it. Somehow this interest in plants was, uh, I could make out that I was getting very close to it. But basically, I, I, up to seventh, I had never thought that I will take up uh, science as a career. I wanted to be a musician. Your family was well, into, into uh, no, not really. Yeah. My family was in uh, social work and politics, yes. but I wanted to be a musician mm. or, uh, or a dancer or something like that. But um, uh, it, it turned out totally different after seven. Who was your role model in school and college? Mm, I don't know. I, I didn't understand no. what the role model was. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm, you know, you always, when you are young you and you are... good teachers. And yes, they, they teachers your... were, yeah, teachers are very important in the life of young students. And I had a teacher, Dr. Chatterjee, she was a brilliant teacher. She was a Hindi teacher, but she used to also teach English to some classes. Very sophisticated, very cultured. She was my role model. And how, how did this uh, switch over came? Uh, After seventh, I had to decide. No, uh, but what triggered this switch over? As I told you. From uh, dance and music to yeah. suddenly. Uh, okay, uh, that's a little uh, awkward question because uh, my mother had made it very clear to me that uh, if you take up music or dance as a career, we won't like you to go on a stage and uh, 
dance and sing and uh, we have a different Old values. family <laughs> values so we would like you to become an educationist uh, someone who's higher education that uh, sort of uh, so i knew that if i take up music as a career it can remain as my hobby but not a career and when you entered at college level and then university level uh, did you look back and thought that maybe you wanted to become something else rather no, than no no my objectives were very clear and i was working towards that uh, when i if completed my 12th i knew that uh, as my story said that you were a very strong headed yes yes girl. i had made up my mind that i want to become a pure scientist i want to do my phd by 12th standard i knew that i want to go so there was a, after was 12th your phd huh? topic uh, my phd topic was on sclerites it's a it's it's an organ in plant thick which gives a new characteristic to the leaves stems mm -hmm. uh, to the roots and bark so i took up this uh, origin of sclerites their development and how they shape the ca typical character of a plant use it afterwards well yes uh, in united states when i was doing my postdoc with a very eminent scientist professor ac leopold he was a plant physiologist and uh, we did some experiments on the latex laticiferous plants and induced uh, uh, ethylene uh, how to increase the latex latex production and that became uh, that paper became so important and uh, e immediately the malaysian people called us and took the technology which i had developed i was working and uh, to increase the yield of rubber from the plant lovely we will discuss and i will ask you question how did you go to united states of america uh, but before that i need to take a break don't go anywhere we are coming back kaisi hua aasmani la pani ko kon karta gila ye dharti kyun hai go hamare jeevan mein suraj ka kya hai rol हवाई जहाज हवा में कैसे उड़ जाता पूरी को कौन है बुलाता कौन भरता इंटरनेट में इंफॉर्मेशन क्या कभी हवा भी होगी रेशन सोचो कि नहीं तो पता कैसे चलेगा विज्ञान प्रसार ताकि हर निर्णय ज्ञान आधारित हो विज्ञान प्रसार ए फिफ्टी इंस्टीट्यूशनल एरिया सेक्टर सिक्सटी टू नोएडा ईमेल इन्फो एट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन Welcome back to Scientifically Yours. I was telling you a story of a girl who was ambitious, strong-headed, saw dreams of changing the world, changing India. When she played as a little girl with dolls, her dolls always went to United States of America for higher education. Dr. Manju Sharma, this is your story. you acquired higher highest education that could be acquired in the country you went to united states of america but before coming back to india you visited and worked in the best institutions of the world in your area which is botany the broad area that i am talking about what problems did you encounter and who helped you out to go and achieve this goal okay uh, after my postdoctoral work in india uh, when i finished my phd i wanted to publish and not leave all the research work which i had done 
just go like that only in the thesis. So, uh, I got the CSIR Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, the senior fellowship, published a number of papers along with my professor who was my guide, Professor A. R. Rao, a very eminent paleobotanist. And uh, then I uh, got an offer from Kew Botanical Gardens where one of my guide, Dr. Metcalf, Metcalf and Chalk, they wrote uh, the first uh, uh, systematic volume uh, for classification of plants and uh, w the one of them was my guide for PhD. So, he invited me, he was very impressed with my work and uh, so, uh, but then when I asked my mother, she said no way, uh, <laughs> I would let go. you can't go and you can't go all by yourself. And uh, well, I was not that old also, I was just about 22 uh, years uh, and I had finished my PhD very early. So, I said then how will I go? Uh, then she said, well, if you get married, I will send you. Uh, okay, then uh, anyway, I said, I will co continue my work here and she allowed me to do my postdoc work. I published and published and then I was also taking classes there for MSc for the practicals. But uh, soon uh, I got married and my husband was in United States. And he was oh, lucky you. Yes, it was a very, very real good and luck. You wanted I, to go to United I wanted States. to go to United States. So he came back he came to India, we got married, straight we went. First I visited Kew Botanical Gardens when I was in London and met my favorite uh, scientist, Dr. Metcalf, and had a long chat, saw the herbarium and everything I wanted to say, took down lots of notes for the, my future work. And then I went to US and within one week uh, I went to the department. Purdue University is one of the uh, you know f best universities in, in the, the world. world. You as know Professor C. N. R. Rao, right. our Bharat Ratna also was in Purdue University. Right. So, it is a very famous university. So, I went there and uh, went and met the professor, showed my CV and uh, next week I had the appointments. So, immediately I joined the university as a senior postdoc and I continued my research. But soon uh, I shifted to Professor A. C. Leopold who also got interested in my work and on the latex and he says why do not we do this. So, I did. So, it was it was really a very very challenging period, but during that time I also had the baby and in US things are very uh, very Difficult. streamlined, very streamlined. Right. My husband was very, very you supportive. You were a bright and a very bright scientist, but when you came back to India, were you received uh, as a bright scientist or there are bad patches in life? I got selected as a pool officer. So, came to for the interviews to uh, UPSC, no the pool officers interviews were held in London mm -hmm. and the chairman UPSC himself used to go and conduct. I still remember Dr. Damle who was the chairman UPSC who came to London to conduct our interviews. So, both myself and my husband we got selected uh, as pool officers. We came back to India. Pool officers in India? India. And you came back? Came back. back. And then I went to uh, FRI Dehradun because my in-laws were living in Dehradun. And since after marriage immediately I had left the country, they were very keen to keep me there for some time. And also with the little baby it was easier because the home at home everybody was there. I have to uh, share with you my secret of success which is the total support I got from my in-laws. They were very fond of me, very supportive, they, they were very happy and in fact uh, to some extent very proud of uh, my work and I continued to work in the Forest Research Institute as a pool officer, published paper. But in the meantime, my husband got an appointment in Delhi, so we had to move here. When I came to Delhi, the problem was I faced and that started, you know, with the Delhi University, the which the department, department was not very supportive. Not very support. Uh, they were supportive, but it was just a pressure from one he wanted and then pressure from the other. So, I got very Everybody disturbed. Everybody wanted you to work with them. Well, they thought and that I was a very good worker and uh, I can pick up new things very fast. When did you start dreaming of biotechnology? No, and then uh, yes, I am, uh -huh, I will tell you what, when, uh, when I finished uh, this, uh, I joined the government of India DSD, 
then uh, I was always uh, discussing with my secretary. Uh, I was given a very good charge of almost an independent charge and reporting directly to the secretary. So, I told him that uh, CSIR has uh, several uh, molecular biology and bi bi biology laboratories, but focused biotechnology effort is needed. And uh, we In should call, country. yes, and this we should call an emerging, area. emerging area. And we should call a meeting, a brainstorming session in DST, uh, where this was, this must be discussed. It was done, threadbare discussion, and that gave birth to uh, the area of biotechnology by setting up a national biotechnology board in 1982. And there was a science advisory committee to the cabinet, and I was the secretary of this committee. So, uh, I was uh, sort of responsible for drafting out the whole thing, and we set up the National Biotechnology Board as an interagency right. organization. And uh, in four years, the board was doing so well. But I, I also feel very proud that the initial programs of the board were uh, drafted by me, along with Dr. S. Ramachandran, who was the first secretary of the Department of Biotechnology. I'll have to take a break, but we'll come back to Department of Biotechnology and its history. Don't go back, we are coming back. इंटरनेट में इंफॉर्मेशन क्या कभी हवा भी होगी रेशन सोचो कि नहीं तो पता कैसे चलेगा विज्ञान प्रसार ताकि हर निर्णय ज्ञान आधारित हो विज्ञान प्रसार ए फिफ्टी इंस्टीट्यूशनल एरिया सेक्टर सिक्सटी टू नोएडा ई मेल इन्फो एट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन scientific tempo be the basis for building nation. Welcome back to Scientifically Yours. We are going through the story of a young little girl who climbed the ladders, worked hard to climb this ladder. In the world of men, she excelled. She excelled in every manner, any position, and she has been at that position in the country. Any award? Yes, she has got all the awards that any woman scientist or a man scientist could aspire for. Now, here is Dr. Manju Sharma. Dr. Sharma, you have been awarded Padmashi. Padm Bhushan. You have been awarded Padm Bhushan. You are the first woman scientist who became president of academy, science academy in the country. You have got all the awards that anybody can aspire for. It has been a long, 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 long journey. How do you look at these awards? Did they encourage you as a scientist? or you were interested in science and building scientific institutions in the country. You build a large number of scientific institutions. Would you tell, tell us about them? Yes, uh, my interest was when I had joined the uh, government in 1974, that I want to uh, use my scientific knowledge and my, my dedication to do high quality science. Uh, in the country and make use of this uh, experience to convert 
uh, not to convert actually, but to build a very strong base for biology and biotechnology. I was really very keen and I thought that my view, I mean I thought very seriously that India really wanted uh, if we have to cater to the large population, to the food problem, agriculture, health related issues, environment, we must have a very strong biology and biotechnology base and that uh, sort of uh, enthused me and I, I really worked very hard. Uh, from the time I got an opportunity till I became secretary and then uh, and all these awards and distinctions well one was always very happy when you get but um, it, they always motivated me to do more and I thought that my country is giving so much recognition so it's my duty that I must do something for the country all the time this feeling and as a result uh, when I was uh, building up these new institutions or creating new infrastructure in the country, I felt very happy. Today when I look at, uh, when, when I look back and I think of uh, all the new things which have been done and we are reaping the harvest today. You know, you, you go to any academy, you see very brilliant uh, biologists coming up. You, in fact, one thing which I tell you, you will be really amazed, so many universities in the country, the vice chancellor. They are biologists. You wanted to build the base. You wanted to help others, especially women who uh, thought that they should be the scientists of the country. But you also worked with prime ministers of the country and many prime ministers of the country, right from Indira Gandhi to uh, Rajiv Gandhi. What was the kind of, what was the support that you got from them? Was there a synergy between political ambitions of the country and scientific ambitions of the country? Uh, one uh, positive thing has been always that we have had the political support at the highest level for science and technology. It started with Panditji when he said that it is science alone that can solve the problems of hunger and poverty. He built up the whole CSIR structure. He built up the basic infrastructure for science and technology. You are talking about Pandit, Pandit Ji. Pandit then we, we had Mrs. Friend. Gandhi, I had the opportunity to work with her. In fact, she was the one who gave a major boost to the women scientist program of that country. She ordered that we should set up women hostels, uh, the crashes for women, working women, so many facilities she gave. And she also approved that the women scientists who join the government, they should get government housing. First scheme uh, which was approved by her during the sixth five year plan period was the uh, application of science and technology for women. All the departments, science, CSI, DST, DBT later on have been implementing it. So then Rajiv ji was still more su uh, stronger supporter of uh, modern science and biotechnology in particular. He, he, he gave a big boost. I must Board. talk about Atalji also. He was the one who took biotechnology not only within the country, outside SARC countries, European countries. We went and set up an Indo-Syrian center for biotechnology in Syria, which was inaugurated by the President of Syria and our Prime Minister. Uh, what I would like to ask you in the end uh, is that what is your message? to the country, what is your message to the younger generation and specifically women uh, who are working in the area of science? Do we have a bright future or there is a problem that we need to overcome? The women, the young girls of this country are very bright. They have a brilliant future, I feel. You go to any university, in the country when you see the convocation. I have addressed so many convocations. You see girls after girls after girls in the merit list. I am very concerned about them. I have started many schemes for them. The 50 percent of the human resource of this country, the women, they have to be used. And I very strongly believe that India would become a very advanced country, a really truly developed country with all the problems which can be addressed by both men and women, but the women have to be an equal partner to that. 
and my message to the younger women, to the young men, to some young boys, it is for both boys and girls, is that science is very critical. Sci India is at in, a, in a stage where we need really good technological interventions for our development, overall development, whether it is health, whether it is food, nutritional security, whether it is environmental clearance, climate change aspects, whatever it is, every sector of development must have a technological input. That is my belief. With the, and that how can you have? When you have a very large trained human resource, a trained human resource pool. And this large means uh -huh. that at least 50 percent of the women yes. should be a partner, should, should be a partner. To this process yes. of development of science yes. and technology. Yes, I in very the strongly feel. And my message would be that the only way to attain success in life is focus and hard work. Thank you very much. That much time we have. I wanted to continue the discussion. We'll be back with another personality next week.